You are listening to Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 KCZW LP Conroe and 106.1 KZCC LP Conroe and worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Extension Hour. My name is Mike McBride. I'm the Program Assistant at Texas AgriLife Extension Agency. With me today is Priscilla Chacon and Michelle Scafe, both of the Better Living for Texans program, also with AgriLife. What we want to do today is talk a little bit about um, one of the holidays that's coming up, and that will be New Year's. I think you were probably expecting Christmas. New Year's is such a big issue. A lot of people make resolutions. That's what we're going to be focusing on. But before we get there, uh, let me just remind you a couple things. You can follow us, if you'd like, at the Healthy Living in Montgomery County on Facebook. We also have a sister program, the Montgomery County Master Gardeners Association, also on Facebook. A couple things happening. We have the second annual Southeast Texas Recertification Seminar. As for professionals who use um, pesticides, the seminar is $70 to register. If you'd like information on it, please call April Fagan at 936-539-7822. There's a $70 registration fee. Also, with the holidays coming up, if you're into pecans, our 4-H program has pecans for sale. We either have halves or pieces. Those are $12 a pound. And again, you can call that same phone number, 936-539-7822, and ask for the 4-H people. Do we have a special program this weekend? Michelle, why don't you describe what's happening? So this weekend, um, Better Living for Texans and the Family Community Health, uh, we will be partnering with our local American region for the Heroes Holiday Harvest. Um, It'll be located out at the Conroe Outlet Mall, and they'll be giving out turkeys. We'll have pictures with Santa, and, of course, you can visit with the Military Veteran Peer Network or with our uh, booth there where we'll be demonstrating and talking about how to um, cook your meat to the proper temperature and how to plan a healthy holiday dish. Excellent. So that helps us to uh, segue into the resolutions because if you're coming to that thing tomorrow, get your free turkey. Talk to Michelle and the rest of us who will be there. uh, Talk about how to make better meals for Christmas. That can be your first resolution. (laughs) Following that, uh, we're looking at the 2018. And do you all ever make resolutions? All the time. <laughs> okay. Michelle? I don't save it for New Year, but I do make resolutions. <laughs> yeah, and I'm guilty too. I make resolutions. Um, I looked at a bunch of stats, and I will go with a positive stat, okay? We'll, we'll phrase everything in the positive here. 8% of those people in America who make resolutions actually get to the end of the year and keep them. Wow. Congratulations. Go you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whoop, whoop. Pat on the back. So anyway, what kind of resolutions do y'all make, or what do you think are common out there? Uh, that we make? Well, that just I anyone. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I think the top one is that weight loss resolution. Everybody Amen. wants, that. Everybody yeah. wants, or that healthy living lifestyle. Everyone gets on that kick the January first, and by the second, I think we already lose about half of them already. So um, there's just mm-hmm. so much pressure. I think when you do put a resolution starting in the beginning, but I was talking to Michelle, and Michelle, why don't you mention them, what you mentioned to me earlier about resolutions and how, what's a good way to ease into it? So a a great way is easing in. I've been um, listening to a lot of different nutrition podcasts and information lately, and they were saying, you know, take and start one thing now, now that you're at Christmas and you're already thinking about what that resolution might going to be. So for example, moving, if you're wanting to be more active in the new year, go ahead and start now. And that way you've got one goal that you're already kind of getting comfortable with. And then if Mm -hmm. you can add more when you get to January 1st, you've already kind of established a new habit. The habit. Yeah. I mean, that's what it is. That's what it really comes down to is learning that new habit and having that. And when you said that, I thought it was so interesting because that's just one habit less for you to learn in the new year. So you're ready to ease into it. You establish your, you know, whatever it is, your healthier eating, your you know, movement, and then when you go into the next year, you already start something else, but you have something already motivating you that you have already been starting. And I like one thing that you were saying, you don't save your resolutions for New Year. If you wanted to change your life, why not start right now? 
you can start making small changes, like you said, ease into it. And uh, one of the stats I was looking at, uh, the top 10 resolutions for 2017, number one was lose weight and healthier living. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you get into life or skill improvements. Yeah. Kind of generic, but uh, I think we all have an idea. Better financial decisions. Oh, yeah. And that's what I'll be talking about in a little bit. Quit smoking. If uh, that is an issue with you, don't wait till January. You're going to start now. Just you know, cutting back. Mm-hmm. People who try to go absolute cold turkey, and there are some, God bless them, who can succeed at doing that. If that's not you, cut down from a full pack a day to half a pack, mm-hmm. three packs a day to two packs. Just make some progress. Subtle changes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Don't set yourself up to fail. And I like this one. One of the resolutions is do more exciting things. Have adventures. <laughs> yeah. Have some adventures. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, it depends on how you define that. But, you know, going for walks with your family, that could be exciting. Taking your dog out, hang around downtown, middle of the <laughs> night, dark corners. That could be very exciting, but probably not real healthy. <laughs> uh, spend more time with family and close friends. That's huge. Yeah, Relationships that are everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you got a lot of family you're hanging out with this weekend. Oh, you know? yeah. Yeah, Priscilla. So mm-hmm. she... I always have family every weekend. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, work out more often. I know one comedian who said that he did exactly one sit-up every day. Sit up in bed. And that's half of it. <laughs> Lay down in bed. That's the other half. <laughs> Learn something new on your own. I'm trying this. I used to speak Spanish, and I'm working on getting that back. So that's a resolution this year. Actually, I talked to my boss, and she would like to see me get fluent again. So is it a resolution or a job requirement now? It's a goal. It's a goal. I like that. <laughs> your job is just on the line for it, but... And this is something I think we should all be doing. Do more good deeds for others. Um, good luck with this one. Find the love of my life. <laughs> if you're married, you better be there. <laughs> and then find a better job. Anything different that you guys would add to that? Okay. That sounds like a really good one. As I say, those are some pretty but we standard hear, ones that we hear when yeah. we're out teaching and talking in different places. I think we hear a lot of those. Yes. Okay, well... You guys have already hinted about a couple of these things. So let's move on into how does that 8% succeed? And the first one is they make SMART goals. You all have heard that acronym. Mm-hmm. Help me with it. What is the S? I actually have it written down. Oh, perfect. So do I. Go for it. <laughs> We're still to okay. the rescue. S is for specific. Yes. M for measurable. A for attainable. R for realistic, which I think that one's like the key one. Yes. And then T for timely. If I have a goal of reaching the moon by July 4th, there's a time constraint, there's a specific goal, it's measurable, not really achievable or realistic. Not at all. No. Unless you have a spaceship in your backyard. Yeah. No, I don't, last time I looked. <laughs> so specific. Um, like I'm going to be talking some about the finance. So a specific goal might be something like to save $25 a month, save $50 a month, give a certain amount of money to charity, churches, whatever. So that's a specific. Your specific are like your W words. So what, when, who, why, those things that could answer those questions. Exactly. If I just sit there and say, I want to save more money. Okay, I could put a penny in my bank. I've saved more money. I'm done with my goal. I'm an overachiever now if I put two cents in. Mm-hmm. So no, but it is specifically who, what, when, where, why, how. You know, those are, those are the keys to making it specific. Mm-hmm. So... I teach uh, classes on finances. One of the big things I have is budgets. So why? Because that's going to help you with the rest of your life by not coming up short each month. I hate it when there's more months at the end of the money. That just does not work well. (laughs) The where. I'm going to cut back on utilities by making sure lights are turned off. Um, I'm going to drive my car less, just make the trips count more. So there's specific things that you can do to help you achieve that goal, but you need to define those. Okay, the M? Measurable. Measurable. Mm-hmm. So you take the end of your your bank statement at the end of each month. How much did you move into your checking account or from your checking into savings, actually? You know, um, some of the things I teach are, uh, uses an envelope system for budgeting. Mm-hmm. So you put in the $50 for groceries, the $20 for gas, or yeah, you drive a great car and get away with $20 for gas. But you put the money into an envelope, and at the end of the month, how much is in there? 
And when one envelope gets empty and you take have to take out the other envelope, to, now you know, okay, I'm using my grocery money for fuel. Or if you budget for entertainment, you can always take out that because that's an easy way to mm-hmm. buy groceries, if you will. And folks, eating out is not buying groceries. That's a different budget. That's like your entertainment account. Okay, the A is achievable. How would you define that? Well, it goes with that realisticness of what can I actually accomplish? Mm -hmm. If you're talking about finances, can I actually, you know, save $10 a month? And how can I do that? Something that's a little bit smaller. If I say I'm going to walk more, that's kind of broad and undetailed. But if... But can I achievably say that by lunch I'm going to have walked 5,000 steps or 2,000 steps? That's a measurable but achievable goal Mm -hmm. because I've increased and I've done something and I can show that I've made an accomplishment. Right. You could get so easily discouraged when you set such big goals Mm -hmm. in front of you. And then it doesn't help you with actually sticking to that plan. You know, when you do those smart goals, those smart little, you know, hooray moments. Mm -hmm. And you could also even you know, reward yourself afterwards. And I think that's also really important is when you do reach those attainable goals, you get to just go splurge on something. Celebrate a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the the achievable goal, if I sit down and say, I want to lose 100 pounds, that is achievable. But if I don't reach 100 pounds in two months, I'm going to get discouraged and quit. Mm -hmm. So why not make an achievable goal of in the next month or two months, next two months, I'm going to lose five pounds. Mm Mm-hmm. That's a stair step, and you're working towards that ultimate goal, but keep your eyes on that little target because you can do that. Mm-hmm. And that is more realistic. Think about today. What can you do today yeah. to better your goal and then go from there? Mm-hmm. Somebody brought a box of donuts to work. My goal is to avoid oh. that box. For the- <laughs> I tried to avoid it. I did. I would go buy it, and uh, okay. I took a bite out of the donut. Hanging my head in shame, I did too. <laughs> oh, I win. I yeah, Michelle didn't get did it. We used to like you. <laughs> she said it looked like wax, and that actually helped her. <laughs> oh, okay. I know it's going to taste like wax. <laughs> okay. Uh, so specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and a time frame. Mm-hmm. You have to sit there say, I'm going to save each month. I'm going to lose so much weight by the end of the year. I, what are your times? Because mm-hmm. that gives you the road roadmap to where you need to go. Well, and sometimes your goal is so overwhelming, you need to just give yourself a small, by the end of today, I'm going to drink four cups of water. Or sometimes you just need to make it something that doesn't overwhelm you. Mm-hmm. It may just be the end of the day I mean, or the end of the week. Exactly. We live, we are always so overwhelmed with work, with stress, with everything. We don't want to add another stress onto us. We want something that actually motivates us to keep mm-hmm. on going. So oh. I think that's a really good thought you have there. Okay. Mm-hmm. The... Um... The SMART goals, I think, are all very good. And what we want to do when we come back shortly is to talk about how that affects our finances, how it affects our nutrition, mm-hmm. how it affects our physical well-being. Um, in reality, a SMART goals are something that I know in Better Living for Texans, that's part of our programs yeah. that we teach. We help people to understand how to set SMART goals when they attend our classes. And I'm sure that that's part of yours as well. I've done it in the finance. I've also done a... a in another state, I, I taught classes on better choices, better living, better health, and SMART was like lesson number one. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to improve my heart. I want to be, never have a heart, another heart attack, you know, whatever. And I've not had one, but people set goals like that. Well, how do you, I don't you know that is if you make it to the end of your life and you've not had another heart attack, you know, so do things that are achievable, do things that are measurable. I think another really good uh, point would be even talking about it, talking about it to people, you know, to even help hold you accountable. An to, accountability partner. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. An accountability partner. Okay, well, we'll be back in a minute. Uh, you are listening to Lone Star Radio, community radio at IRLoneStar.com or on Conroe's FM 104.5 and FM 106.1. We'll talk to you in a few minutes. Thank you for joining us.
The Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service has been dedicated to educating Texans for over a century. In 1915, the Extension Program was established under the federal Smith-Lever Act to deliver university knowledge and agricultural research findings directly to the people. Ever since, AgriLife Extension Programs have addressed the emerging issues of the day, serving diverse populations across the state. Texans turn to Extension for solutions in horticulture, agriculture, 4-H and youth, and family and consumer sciences. Extension agents respond not only with answers, but also with resources and services that result in significant returns on investment to boost the economy. Join us Fridays at 1 o'clock for the AgriLife Extension Hour. Don't forget to download the Lone Star Community Radio app from your Google Play or Apple Store. Bring Montgomery County's Community Radio with you anywhere with your smartphone or tablet. If you are in the Conroe area, tune in on FM. That's Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1. If you are on the computer, bookmark IRLoneStar.com as your internet radio station. A Lone Star Community Radio. Broadcasting 24-7 from the heart of downtown Conroe, Texas. Hello and welcome back to the Extension Hour. You are here with us today with Michelle Scafey, Priscilla Chacon, and I am Mike McBride. We've been talking a little bit about um, New Year's resolutions and uh, talk specifically about SMART goals and how to set them. A lot of the classes I teach are in finances. Uh, so I want to talk just briefly about that, and we'll move on into the other folks also. But how many of you have ever said, I need to save more money? My goal is to save more money or something on that line. Mm-hmm. And you can really do it for the first week of January. <laughs> and by the second week, it's like, oh, look, you know, we've got all these after Christmas sales. I need to go buy that doodad. Mm-hmm. Well, I didn't get that for Christmas, so I need to go buy it. It's on sale. Ooh, think of how much money you're saving. Mm-hmm. I'm saving 50% by buying it today. No, you're spending 50% by buying it today. <laughs> so if, if there's something on sale that is something you actually need and you have the available funds to do it, get it. That's a smart move. But if it's just something blingy and shiny and I like that, but you really haven't budgeted for it, It'll be on sale again at a later date. Just take a deep breath. Stick to your goals. Stick to resolve. Mm-hmm. And make better choices. But one of the things I, I focus on in my financial classes, is, this is sort of like a roadmap. You know where you want to be. You want to have $1,000 saved at the end of six months. Okay, so that's where you want to be. To get there, you have to know where you are today. So what I encourage my folks to do is ideally for a month, but really even just for a couple of weeks, if you can save every single receipt from every person, this is a pack of gum, save that receipt, to sit down and start itemizing. I spent so much money on groceries, so much money on fuel, so much money on clothing, so much money on coffees, you know, whatever. <laughs> so that way you know where you are today. And so that way you know exactly what Things you need to it really change. does put things into perspective when you do write oh, absolutely, it out absolutely. and see where it is that your money is going into. Yeah, probably like more in your field, a uh, food diary. Oh, yeah, if, it helps. If you don't know what you're eating, how do you know what to change? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, and I'm sure with the physical stuff, too, if you are not yeah, walking. Absolutely. Yeah. So a diary there would be good, too. So know where you are so you know where you want, so you know how to make the plans to get there. Mm-hmm. Um One of my goals several years ago was debt reduction. Well, I had to know exactly how much debt I had, run a credit report. And now I know how much money has to go to the different uh, credit cards, whatever I had. And it helped make the achievable, realistic goals. Time frame is a little bit different. Yeah, I I never really sit down and said, okay, I need to have JCPenney paid off by July. But if that was the smallest one, I took that payment pay, pay, pay. When pennies was closed, moved everything over to, I don't know, MasterCard or whatever the next one was. And my output each month never changed, but the amount I was paying, I was paying minimum on on everything, but doubled on the smallest. Move that up to the next smallest, take all that money, move it up to the next smallest, and so it's a snowball effect. 
So my goal was to be out of debt within five years. I'm at year four now, and I'm almost there. Awesome. So it can be done. I'm preaching, the, you know, yeah, but there's a lot of things where I think, okay. There's a lot like. of sacrifices also that come into that. Yeah, I, I, I tease folks. Um, that sound goofy, I guess. I don't go down to the big name brand stores and buy clothes. I can find things on eBay mm-hmm. at great prices. Mm-hmm. And so I save money that way. So those are the choices I make because mm-hmm. I still like nice things. I just do a lot of shopping now. Okay, so set what, set what your financial goals are. What's a realistic goal for you? Is it to be out of debt? Is it to save more money? Make one goal and work on that. If you set four or five goals, you're going down four or five different paths at once. It gets very confusing. Very there. overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. So what's your one goal? Is it to get savings? Is it to pay off a certain bill? Is it to get out of debt? You choose. No one can tell you what's right or what's wrong. One of the biggest ways to make that goal happen, that 8%, is to have an accountability partner. Mm-hmm. So if I wanted to save money, I could come up to you two ladies and sit there and say, okay, ask me every payday, did you put anything in savings yet? Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to ask you that because I don't want to be held accountable <laughs> you know for that. I really <laughs> like now, it, it, they make it, depending on your bank, or I'm sure all banks does it now, where you could just automatically put money right into your bank. So you don't even see that money when your check comes in. It mm-hmm. just automatically just drafts right into your savings account. That is a huge item on our financial stuff. Automate every payment that you can. Mm-hmm. Uh, because if you're late on a payment, that hits your credit report for seven years. If it's automated yeah. and you do it the first day it's due instead of the last day it's due, mm-hmm. you're always ahead and you save tons of interest. Mm-hmm. So very smart move. And absolutely. late fees. Those late fees kind of get you. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Amen, sister. Yes. No, the automation is huge. Anything you can do in your life, I, I believe in automation. Make it as automatic as you can. So some of the places where I try to save money is on groceries. I'm going to use this to move over to the nutrition. Because I do like to eat healthy. And a lot of people argue that eating healthy is very expensive. And I would argue if it's your priority and you budget for it, it's really not that expensive. But you can't make it very healthy, too. It, I guess it all depends on, like we always say this, but what is your goal? It is. What is you your know, goal? You know, what is your, and then it doesn't have to be expensive at all because, you know, your fresh vegetables, frozen vegetables, they're going to have, the frozen vegetables are going to be a little bit uh, more economical, right? And they still have the same nutritious value in them. And also, it also depends, like, what is your goal? Do you, are you eating too much out? Do you want to maybe save time? Then you also go for the package, right. you know, pre-cut And items. I think that's where people don't realize, yeah. you know, just not eating out and buying your groceries and cooking yeah. at home is going to make a huge impact on the financial and the health aspect of it. Right. So you're going to prep two birds with one stone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So it's just really, yeah, you end up do saving money when you actually plan out your meals, see what it is that, you know, you could eat and then budget that way. Because like you said, a lot of times we don't realize how much our money is going out in fast foods or restaurants. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. I know when I started doing my budget work, tracking those things like I was talking about, I found out that I was eating out no less than five times a week. You know, it might be a breakfast sandwich at a drive through nice restaurant in the evening, something. I was just eating out all the time. And I started to look at, okay, when I take my family out and we spend $35, $40 at a fast food restaurant, how far would that gro- that dollar go in a grocery store? Mm-hmm. So much farther. Yeah. It, it, instead of one meal, we could have had three or four. Mm-hmm. And healthier. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Okay. So what are some of the other realistic goals that we can help people with as far as nutrition is concerned? What would be reasonable? I mean, whenever I, somebody comes and asks me for advice, the first thing I tell them to do is what are your, what is it that you want to do? Do you want to eat healthier? Do you want to lose weight? And then right after that, I tell them, you have to write down everything that you eat that day. I don't care if it's a piece of chocolate, if it's a cheeseburger with like extra cheese, it doesn't matter. And then from there, you could see where it is your calories are going into, and you could easily make such fine little adjustments. Maybe instead of the double cheeseburger, you know, make it to just a single patty, you know, burger or stuff like that. It just... Having it written down, just like your finances, is going to really give you a big impact. And you're going to be more self-aware of where it is that your choices are going into. 
So really just writing down your um, dietary. And, and you can shift simply from there, like you're saying, from a double to a single, yeah. from a soda to a water, you know, a lemonade, half and half instead of full sugar. You can make small adjustments and keep making those adjustments till you get where you want to be. Exactly. And the, this, this is the thing. When you start, you know, losing that one pound, that's going to motivate you to keep on track. Yes, it, it really does. And all you had to do was just, like you said, simply just switch that, you know, soda for a unsweet tea, you know, and that's all you had to do for that whole week. And you lost a pound. It's like, oh, it keeps that ball running and you get really excited to keep on. Yeah, a couple of one change that I made in my own life was I, I love burritos, oh. refried <laughs> beans all through them. But that's a lot of lard. So you can buy a fat free version of refried. Mm -hmm. But I also found that if I just get like a can of black beans, and use that as part of the ingredient. There's almost no fat at all then. Mm -hmm. Exactly. The healthy choice, so I still get all the f wonderful flavor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But again, you have to know what you're eating. Yeah, exactly. And then also another thing, like we mentioned earlier, is just, you know, if you're eating out, just cut out maybe one day, maybe just leave it for the weekends. Mm -hmm. You have a really good week where you've stuck to your meal plan or stuck to whatever it is that you thought you, you know, you cooked throughout the week and then reward yourself. Go on Saturday, go have a meal that you'd like, you know, and so you're not depriving yourself, but you are kind of limiting uh, on where, you, what your food choices are, you know, on the, on the weekend. And that's also going to help a lot with your goals. Yeah, I think a little bit uh, of being proactive is necessary for the better eating. I know a lot of families have kids, you've got sports, you've got band, you've got choir, you've got church, you've got this or that. Or age, put a plug in for our group. Mm -hmm. That was my family. But you know, every, say, Wednesday night, it's going to be busy. Mm -hmm. So if you bake something on the weekend, and put it in the refrigerator so it's ready to go for Wednesday, mm -hmm. you just save yourself eating out and eating a better nutritious meal. Yeah. So just planning ahead. Yeah, that weekend meal prep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Michelle likes to cut vegetables on her Sunday afternoons. I do, my <laughs> Sunday <laughs> Buy the groceries, get them home, get them chopped, and then they're ready to use. Yeah, and utilize what you have in your kitchen, whether it's the you know pressure cooker or the crock pot or whatever it is. Use those tools that are available to you to help you meet your goals. I think that's really good. When you do get those vegetables, go ahead and cut them right when you get to your house. That way, you know you have no excuse of having to wash them, having to prep mm -hmm. them. You just put them in little baggies and you grab and go. Exactly. And they're also really good snacks as well whenever you're hungry you just have you know your little bag of celery little uh, you know peanut butter and that's just an awesome snack that it is keep you filled up it's very nutritious one of the agents uh well amy the, the agent that we three work for it suggested something to me with the, the guys that i work with uh, on finances we're looking at ways to save groceries money these guys are on snap cards mm -hmm. so they can't really afford the 98 percent lean beef burger exactly they can do the 80 percent so she's talked about, it, and I, I priced it at one of the local stores this weekend, five pounds for, I think it's like $13, $14. So it sounds high. Cook it, mm -hmm. drain off the fat, freeze it. Mm -hmm. So you don't take whatever's left, divide up into four chunks because that'll give you four pounds. If, yeah. Do the math, one pound is fat. Anyway, put it in a little baggie, and then when it's time to eat and you want to use it, it's already cooked, put it into boiling water. Mm -hmm. And that heats up faster than having to sit it on your counter for hours to drain. Mm -hmm. Pour the water off. Now you got almost all the fat out. So now okay. you got lean ground beef. Season it however you want. If it's going to be Italian, going into spaghetti, do that. If it's going to be Spanish, going into a taco, season it that way. But you got the hot cooked. And you beef. can do that with with any protein. You can do it with chicken. Make you know, cut a cook a whole chicken, debone it, and portion it out and have yeah. it frozen. Um, grains, a lot of rice and stuff can be cooked ahead and portioned out and frozen, mm -hmm. and then it's. That much of your meal is already ready. It's a convenience food you did yourself. Yep. I, one of the tricks I saw for better nutrition, like during the holidays, the night, it's like Christmas Eve or whatever, you want to have nice omelets for Christmas morning. Everyone goes in the kitchen. You've already got the eggs mixed. You put a couple scoops into a baggie. Mm -hmm. One person wants onions. One wants oh, tomatoes. Yeah. One wants really mushrooms, fun. bacon, whatever. Put your name on the outside of the bag. Put in the refrigerator. And the next morning, you dump those bags into boiling water. Cooks in the bag, and now I know, okay, this is Mike's, this is Michelle's, this is Priscilla's. We all have exactly what we want, and it's fast, mm -hmm. easy, and so much cheaper than going out to eat. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So anyway, I think we're about at the bottom of the hour. 
Once again, you're listening to the Extension Hour. This is Lone Star Community Radio. You can get us on the web at IRLoneStar.com or Conroe's FM 104.5 and FM 106.1. Look forward to talking with you a little bit more when we come back. Thank you. A Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's radio station with talk, music, weather, and traffic for Montgomery County. Have a question or comment about one of our shows? Want to know how to reach a host? Just contact the station at IRLoneStar.com or call in and leave a message at 936-647-3776. Get involved with your community with Lone Star Community Radio. Attention movie lovers, The Ticket Stub is a new radio show servicing Montgomery County that is meant for you. The Ticket Stub is available live every Thursday at noon on FM 104.5 and 106.1, as well as anytime on IRLoneStar.com. Connor and Dick will let you know what's coming out in the theater, what is worth streaming, and what's going on in the world of film. The Ticket Stub, your home for movie talk. Hello and welcome back to the Extension Hour. I'm Mike McBride. I'm with the Texas AgriLife Extension Agency. You're speaking Extension Agency. I can do that. <laughs> I'm a trained professional. Don't try this at home. <laughs> I'm with uh, Priscilla Chacon and Michelle Scafey, two of my partners in crime at the Extension Agency. The two ladies work for Better Living for Texans, and I'm a program assistant. Uh, what we do, if you just heard the commercial, we do try to take the research from Texas A&M and bring it out to the community, whether that is for uh, like diabetes or other health issues, we nutrition, gardening, finance, uh, passenger safety in vehicles. We do an awful lot. Uh, just let us know what you need us to help you with. We'll be happy to come out and do our best to, to get your program going. Anyway, we were talking a lot about nutrition and uh, resolutions for the new year. So for so, um, what are some realistic goals, or can you even define a realistic goal for another person as far as nutrition is concerned? What's con- some generic ones? When it comes to nutrition, mm-hmm. really being um, specific. So, like, you know, adding more vegetables to your plate. That's something very, you know, attainable to do. And something for you to, you know, get, be more colorful, be more creative with the food choices that you have. Um, another easy one is swapping your drinks, you know, swapping that soda, that one can of soda for a water bottle instead for that day. And then you, you tend to gradually, um, manipulate your taste buds to the soda being too, too sweet for you. And then you're going to gradually want to go towards the water. Um, what else can we do in order to make a very, um, healthy weight loss? Uh, you have to develop good habits. You know, and so that's what it really comes down to is these little swaps um, to make um, those habits better and to make them last longer. um, You really do want to stick to those little um, improvements and they're going to help you with the overall goal of losing weight at the end. Yeah, I know in my own home, I live with two other men and we've talked about improving weight, improving health and diet. Um, But these two other guys eat basically once a day and have a huge meal, seven, eight o'clock at night. And I like to have three smaller meals with a couple snacks in between. So is it a realistic goal to sit there and tell these guys, okay, for me to achieve my goal, which one of the things is to tell your family and friends, I need you to change your ways of doing it. To me, that just doesn't sound realistic to force my... It's, it's not. And, and in my household, we ended up... My parents were very supportive when I decided I wanted to go through this nutrition journey Mm -hmm. and change my ways. I didn't always uh, like vegetables. Actually, I hated it when I was younger. Mm -hmm. But when you start realizing the health benefits that it has for you um, and what nutrition and exercise could do for your body Mm -hmm. motivates you. And I was a teen at this time, you know, very hard headed. Um, But I just saw how you just felt better afterwards. And then having that family support is nice. But not everyone has it. You're right. Yeah. So 
sticking to your plan, like what I would do um, when we would go out to eat with my friends, they would go eat their, you know, burgers and stuff. I literally will pull out a bag of nuts of, um, you know, macadamia, almonds, and they would always make fun of me. But I mean, I was so um, determined to meet my goal of that year that I would pack my own snacks and I would not eat the foods that were there. But I mean, it just depends on how much, how badly do you want it? How badly do you want that change? You know, exercising. How many? It's really funny because January first, or no, not January first, January second. Everybody's in that gym, right, Michelle? And uh, yeah, <laughs> the gyms get flooded for the first few weeks of January, and by February, they're empty again. Yeah. So. Yeah, but they have such great deals in yeah, January. Yeah. How much money are you saving? Right. That yeah. you're not going to use. <laughs> Well, I know in a family setting, it's making it available. You talked about being with other people that maybe don't share your goals, and that that is very normal. I mean, I had children. I have a husband. (laughs) Not everyone necessarily wants to eat whole wheat bread. It took many years of it being available, and um, my husband was the hard convert on whole grain bread. Um, But it took years of it being there and, and just getting it's available. It's not being pushed too hard. But it's something that's there for him to try. And and then eventually did work that taste bud into mm-hmm. now it's okay. Now I can eat whole wheat bread. Yeah. You both are hinting at something I think we teach in a lot of our classes. You, you talk about you were a teenager when you were first trying to a lot of these fresh vegetables and whatnot. How many of us parents have dealt with little kids who like they don't want to eat that eggplant? They don't want to eat that squash. It looks yucky. Uh, my kids ate broccoli only if there's cheese on it. And I think it's more for the cheese than broccoli. But what we're finding is that if, as a parent, don't force it. Like, you're not going to leave the table until you clean your plate. Because it, it's just an adversarial re, uh, relationship then. But offer it to the kids 10, 12 times. Just, you know, taste it. And after several times, they begin to realize, oh, you know what? I really do like this. I think my daughter was the only kid on the planet who hated with a passion hated mashed potatoes she's in her 20s before she realized oh this really is pretty tasty (laughs) yeah there's a research that shows that i think you have to expose the the different food 11 times to your child before Mm -hmm. they actually want to taste it or Mm -hmm. accept the fact that they're going to taste a new food yeah so that persistence having that food available having that new vegetable you know introduced into their diet plan and giving them the choice of actually accepting it and trying it for themselves. And one of the things Michelle does, and you can go into deeper detail, is goes out to the schools and helps to plant gardens. Mm-hmm. What does that do to the kids and their interest in veggies? It, it elevates it to a whole new level because they've invested their time and their energy and their efforts into nurturing a plant from a seed or from a transplant all the way to harvest. They have a whole new relationship with this food because they have nurtured it to the point that it came to the table. And even if initially they were not interested in tasting it, even after the garden, most of the time, then when you're hands-on showing them how to cut it and cook it and do it, they'll at least give it a try. Mm -hmm. And we've had so many kids, wow, I never thought I would like it, but I did. But um, it just opened a new new, uh, way of looking at food for them because they brought it all the way from the beginning to the plate. I'm going to put you on the spot here. What are some of the other benefits for getting the kids out of the classroom and into the garden? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. (laughs) It's an emotional release. The kids Mm -hmm. get exposed to some nature, some sunshine, some fresh air. Um, So it boosts their emotion and their energy, gets them a little bit energy out. They um, have the ability to invest uh, their whole being. So all of your senses are used in the garden. Touch, taste, smell, see. Um year and then um, it gives them that opportunity to kind of reset so when they walk back to the classroom they've kind of gotten it out of their system they've gotten a break and when they come back into the room we find that they are better at sitting still they're better focused they're better attentive because they've had an opportunity to go outside and engage in something different and relieve those senses that are all stuffed up in their bodies in the classroom and then when they come back performance is so much better I'm sitting here looking at the table where the three of us are sitting. We all three have our phones out. Maybe not using them right now, but they're all sitting next to us. Getting the kids out and into a garden. Mm-hmm. They're away from electronics. They're moving. Mm-hmm. 
uh, may not be a lot of exercise. It's a certain, probably not aerobic. I can't imagine aerobic weeding. You'd be surprised. <laughs> I don't know. You I've, to, I've gardened too. You yeah. need to work in the garden with me some. <laughs> Michelle has some really good calves. It's <laughs> <Yeah>. all <laughs> <Saw> that squatting. <laughs> so why is it so important in like these resolutions we're talking about for the, the new year to get outside and to do some movement? Why is it so important for not just kids, but for all of us? It, it really does help us to, if the first and foremost, it is a mood boost. Okay. It is going to help with seasonal affective disorder, seasonal depressions, um, loneliness, sadness. I, I won't lie. I'm kind of sad this year. All my kids are grown up. I'm like, who's going to come visit me for Christmas? But go out and take a walk. It just gives you an opportunity to reset emotionally. Yeah. It helps you physically because it's getting that circulation flowing. It's boosting your immune system. It is um, working those calories out a little bit. So it's not just about weight loss. It's about getting that emotional, physical, spiritual relief of being out and being moving. And, of course, if the weather's not cooperative, because sometimes it's not, there's movement in your house. You know, you can work out to an app. You can walk around. You can do some cleaning, go up and down the stairs a few times. There's always something that you can do. But just even if you have to bundle up, going outside and getting a little fresh air and moving around um, kind of just resets your whole system. I think people would be surprised. You talk about the house cleaning. You, they'd be surprised about how many calories are actually burned there. Mm-hmm. And I know there's a ton of apps out there. Uh, My Fitness Pal, Lose mm-hmm. It, Super Tracker yes. with a, the MyPlate.gov site. Um, you put in your, your, your log, your food, what you're eating, but then uh-huh. you can also put in the things that you're doing. Exactly. Just a 10 minute walk because uh, exercise, as I understand it, does not have to be all in one lump. No, it's actually better if we break it up throughout the day. Perfect. Okay. Absolutely better. Um, so, walk across Texas. The website there has an activity calculator that you can put in your house cleaning or moving boxes or whatever, and it will tell you about how many miles that equates. Yeah. And to so, me, that's great. I walked a mile cleaning my house. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're burning <laughs> two bricks. You're burning your calories. Yeah. And just sitting here watching TV, I don't think you get much of an aerobic exercise by pushing your thumb on that uh, remote button. No, you're you giving know. yourself carpal tunnel. Yeah, so you don't <laughs> want that. Just adding to the problems. You stay away from that. Okay, so we're going to come back in a minute, and we're going to look at um, exercise, at what, what would be realistic goals that we can add for the year. If you're listening to Lone Star Community Radio at IRLoneStar.com and on FM 104.5 and 106.1. This is the Extension Hour. We're glad that you joined us. Talk to you in a few minutes. Lone Star Community Radio presents the Lone Star Radio Troupe. This talented cast will perform radio plays right here in the Lone Star Studios located in downtown Conroe. There will be a new performance every first Sunday of the month. And if you miss the broadcast, just go to Lone Star Community Radio's podcast or YouTube anytime during that month. Go to our LoneStar.com archives to find the Lone Star Radio Troupe's latest play that's available. This is Lone Star Community Radio, Conroe's 104.5 FM and 106.1 FM Community Station. Find us on the web at IRLoneStar.com. Lone Star Community Radio is a supporter to the performing arts in Montgomery County, Texas. Lone Star Community Radio is looking for those who are interested in hosting their own talk show. With monthly and weekly slots available on Conroe's FM, 104.5, 106.1, and on IRLoneStar.com. Start your own podcast, create your first YouTube channel, and be on TV. Contact Lone Star Community Radio online at IRLoneStar.com or call the message line at 936-647-3776 to take your first step into the radio world. Hello and welcome back to the Extension Hour on Lone Star Community Radio. My name is Mike McBride and with me is Michelle Scaife. <laughs> if you're watching the podcast, I'm hanging my head in shame because I mispronounced her name. That's Very okay. embarrassing. Very common. Uh, Priscilla had to step out. She has another engagement. So you're with the two of us now. And Michelle, we were talking about um, exercise, movement, uh, getting outside. Those are really your more of your expertise than mine. So... <laughs> 
Tell us how to do it. One step at a time. If you're already moving, keep doing it. If you're not moving, start now. This is the time to do it. Um, the sun has finally come out, so it's a great moment to yes. step outside, go take a walk. It doesn't have to be difficult or rushed or, you know, you don't have to wear special clothing to just go out and take a walk. Right. So simply start by getting up and doing it. Literally, just get up and take a walk. So we're talking about those uh, smart goals. Mm -hmm. If your goal is to add uh, like three hours of exercise a week, that's mm -hmm. a step in the right direction. It is. I don't think that'd be the ultimate goal, but that would be a step. So that that would be a specific, you know, three hours, it's measurable, it's achievable, it's realistic. Mm -hmm. What happens if we have a morning like we did today and this, uh, it snowed this morning, in case you really did not notice for some reason? <laughs> well, I don't know about you, but I got my heart rate up pretty good getting the snow off the car. So there that's still movement. <laughs> um, for some of us, even on a day like this morning, you know, we had to bundle up, but we swept the snow off our windshields. We, we may have had to have swept our driveway a little bit to get out the door. That was still movement and exercise. Yeah. Your heart rate still got, mine did, maybe just because I can't reach my, wouldn't we chill very well, but um, we still got moving. We still got going. So you can still do it. And I have to admit, I am very, very happy to not live in a place where I used to, <laughs> where I had to shovel driveways or use a snowblower mm -hmm. on a 150 foot driveway. I don't miss that exercise. <laughs> No, down here we rake leaves. I've done that. And yeah. that's a that's a great full body, um, you know, cardio inducing workout, just raking mm -hmm. leaves, um, scrubbing your floors. That is exercise. Um, going up and down the stairs to take the laundry to the bedrooms is great exercise. Um, there's always something you can do to move. Um, but even if you're just sitting at your desk, I mean, we're sitting here at the table, we can stretch our arms out to both sides and get a good stretch. We can reach overhead. We can twist in our chair. Any amount of movement circulates the blood flow. It um, increases the oxygen in our body. It helps us let go of some of that stress and get the blood flowing. Yes. I know uh, I was raised in far west Texas, and for 30 years, uh, that was my home. But we had a pool. Mm -hmm. And so that is a mindless, relaxing mm -hmm. chore to clean the pool. The sweep <laughs> goes down, sweep comes up, step one step over. Sweep goes down, sweep comes up. But it's moving. It is. Yeah, so I intentionally took that as my chore where I live now. We have a pool because that forces me to go out a couple of days a week and do something outside. Exactly. Uh, including getting the leaves out of the water. That's always a blast. Mm-hmm. Okay. As in your classes that you teach, what are some of the exercises or ways that you recommend to people to integrate new exercises into their, their lives? Well, we always want to start with the basics. And so the very first one, of course, is walking. Just getting up and starting walking throughout the day. Maybe yeah. increase that intensity as you go at it. But then from there, we want to work on things that are movements we use in our whole life, whether that's squatting down and standing back up unassisted, um, being able to lift over our heads or twist our uh, upper body, to, you know, twist that spine. Mm -hmm. So we want to really look at things of what is your daily activity and what movement is going to help that. And there are, there are apps online that are completely free that help you with stretching and fitness and mobility. Um, one of them that my classes, I share them a lot, it's called Swork It. It's literally called Swork It. And all that is, is um, you, you can set how many minutes you want to go. What type, do you want yoga type stretching? Do you want to get your heart rate up? Do you want to, you know, do some strength work? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's the basic movements, push up, pull up sit up, stand up, you know, these are things that as we age and as we grow up and as we become desk job workers, sometimes we lose those muscle mobilities and we want to keep that going. And I think it's interesting you mentioned the desk. I have ultimate goals that I have not started working on yet of using like an exercise band at my desk because when I'm sitting there reading a document, whatever, I can use the, the cords to stretch mm -hmm. um, and get some motion while I'm working and get paid for it. So I think, it, I hope it's relevant or apparent to the folks listening that these goals, these New Year's resolutions don't have to just be in one specific area. I think getting more exercise, mm -hmm. getting out in the sun, doing things with your kids, walking your pets, mm -hmm. all have positive health benefits. Um, before you do that, make sure you're hydrated. That would be more in Priscilla's area. <laughs> 
drink lots of water, but eat healthy foods. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of junk research on the internet, if you will. Mm -hmm. You have to have carbs, but you don't have to get in a Snickers bar. And that's where our classes come in. Um, Our classes are not charged. We don't charge for what we teach people, and we're here for the public. So we have classes that we promote throughout the county and through different places. If you want a class, if you want to get a group together and call us and say, let's have a class on either increasing our fitness, increasing our nutrition, how to use that new pressure cooker you got for Christmas, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, contacting our office and finding out where are the classes happening or where would you like to have one. Um, We can help you with what are the realistic ways to meet the goals that you need. And um, if you you mess up January 1st, just start over January 2nd. It's okay. Absolutely. (laughs) Or if you messed up at lunch. We have the afternoon start up Dinner again. is a whole nother yeah. meal. Do better then. And I think what Michelle was saying, if you have an interest in a specific class, whether you're mm-hmm. a church, um, school, even a business, we can work with your employee wellness program. Exactly. Give us a call. Our number is 936-539-7822. And just ask whoever answers the phone, because a lot of us, different people answer it. But find out, you know, say, this is what I'm wanting to do. How can you help me? And I'll bet my bottom dollar that there's probably some way that we can Mm -hmm. uh, and would be willing and happy to do so. Um, Do you have anything else you want to say before we (laughs) close out the day? Well, it's never, you know, don't worry about the weather. There's always a way to move around and get active. Um, And one of the things that in our office that we try to do is... um, we have, we, most of us have a Fitbit or a watch that has a timer on it. And about every hour we give ourselves a reminder to get up and move. And so we might get up, take a walk around the building and come back to our desk. So every little bit helps. It doesn't matter what it is or what you're doing or where you're at. Even if you're at work, you can hop up, walk down the hall and then back to your desk. Right. And that, that little bit makes a big difference. And I normally don't buy too much into ethnic stereotypes and all. I am a Scotsman. I do wear a kilt. <laughs> and the stereotype of being cheap, that's me. So I'm always looking for inexpensive ways to exercise, to eat better, and to save the, my bottom line. Mm-hmm. So if you, any of that appeals to you, if you have any questions, give us a call. Like I said, 936-539-7822. I want to thank you for joining us today. My name is Mike McBride, and I'm here with Michelle Scaife. Thank you for your time. We really do appreciate it. Have a great day. Thank you for checking out this production of Lone Star Community Radio. Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's community radio station. Don't forget to check out this show and many others across the Lone Star Community Radio Network. Either live on Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, the Lone Star Internet Radio app, or IRLoneStar.com's live audio stream, and on replay on podcasts, Channel 12, Our City TV, and Conroe, or Channel 21 KVQT in Houston, and of course their YouTube channel. This production is copyrighted and all rights are reserved by Lone Star Community Radio. Have a question regarding this program or other Lone Star Community Radio shows? Want to sponsor or start your own show? Call the station message line at 936-647-3776 or email the station at lscrstudios at gmail.com.